Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here. I'm back with some brand new projects for back to school, fall and beyond. I've got this cute little pencil, pencil bag which would make a great little container for um, a student, teacher, staff, anyone with a back to school theme or maybe beyond. I thought it would be cute to, um, I, I kind of did it up as a uh, survival kit, like a teacher survival kit or maybe an older student survival kit for some stuff you could put in their locker or um, a teacher at their desk, some little travel size things that might come in handy. I thought that would be a cute idea, but you could certainly put anything you would like in here as a special little treat for someone or even just make it as some cute decor. So I also have a really fun little apple and I'm really happy about the way that it came out. I love the geometric look of it and I think it would coordinate really well with the leaf and the pumpkin from the fall weekend SVG kit which came out last year which would be 2018. So if you click on the fall category at svgcuts.com you can see those too. Kind of a similar style which I think looks really cute. Definitely more than just back to school could also be fall. So I like the way that it's hinged. It makes a nice little presentation and I think if you give it to someone they're going to be wowed. And when you see how easy it is to put together here in a few minutes, I think you will also be wowed. So I have a nice little simple gift bag, simple yet detailed so that it doesn't take too long to make, yet it has more, more going on than the typical gift bag that you would be able to buy at a store or um, just make really super quick. Also very quick and easy, but it's a lot of fun to show off some cute patterned papers. And of course, it does not have to be just for back to school. Um, the shape of it could go for any theme. And it's a lot of fun to get to use lots of cute coordinating papers, as well as these three by four elements that come with a lot of paper collections nowadays, such as this one, which is from Authentique and it, it's called Scholastic, but this 12 by 12 piece you could cut up into the rectangular, rectangular designs. And um, I've noticed a lot of paper collections come with this kind of a thing, which I love because it's so easy to cut it with a paper trimmer and put it on something like this. So the rest of the paper is super cute, kind of vintage-y and adorable. I loved using it. I got it from a cherryontop.com, but I'm sure they've also got it elsewhere such as scrapbook.com, what have you. But if you've already got some paper that you want to use, I'm sure that will look cool too. And again, any kind of theme. I just got some fall and Halloween paper and I really want to see how it would look if I whipped up a little bag with that or I, I probably won't, I probably won't get around to it, but it sounds like a lot of fun. So I hope you have fun making yours if you do. So I've got all the pieces cut out to show you how all three of these projects go together. So let's go ahead and do it. First for the framed panel bag, I've got my pieces laid out. I have these side panels, the front part and the bottom of the bag, as well as some front panels and this frame that's yellow in my case, the top and the bottom of the tag this back panel as well as this final part of the bag itself here. This back panel is just going to go right onto the back here. As you can see I've folded this a little bit. I folded all of the areas where it's scored on all the score lines I folded it. And then this piece goes towards you as well as these these three in inner tabs and this bottom one. And then it also is a valley fold too, up there, as well as right here. The rest of the folds are regular folds, which are called mountain folds. All of the folds on this other piece are just regular mountain folds too. I'm gonna start by gluing this bottom piece onto this piece here with some glue on these tabs.
Next, I'm gonna glue this piece right onto the inside here. like that. Next I can glue this piece inside. You can cut this with your machine if you would like. It's included in the extras folder, but it's simply a three by four rectangle, three inches by four inches. So a lot of popular paper collections come with a 12 by 12 sheet that includes a lot of these designs. So if you wanted to cut it out by hand or with a paper trimmer, you could do that and use something that way, or you could do patterned paper or solid paper and then stamp on it. Maybe stamp a design on some white and color it in if you like coloring in stamped designs. So you can go ahead and glue that inside. Then these frame panels, you can go ahead and glue right in the center of each section of this frame. Next, I'm going to glue my back panel in place as well as some of my side panels. So these clearly go in the center here with the holes. And then these are all identical shapes. So whatever you want to glue next, I think I'm going to glue mine just like this. So I'll glue those there and I'll glue these here. Before I glue these other strips on, I'm going to glue this together. Next, I'm going to close it up by putting some glue on this other side tab.
super cute. I love being able to use so many of those adorable patterned papers. Next, I'm going to fold these gently out of the way. I'm going to fold this in and put glue on the inside of each tab. them in, flip it over, and press down on the inside. Next I'm going to flip it over and glue this cute patterned paper onto the bottom. Next, I can put my cute little tag together. I'm going to go ahead and use the same stamp I used before. It's from this Hero Arts uh, stamp set. It is called, well, it's called CL351. There's not really a proper, proper name, but I believe I got it at Michael's. I'm a big fan of captions for stamps. There we go. Just barely fits. Next, I'm going to take some craft wire that I have. I just happen to have this in my stash. I'm not sure what gauge it is, but it's not really that important. It's thick enough to be sturdy enough, but not so thick that it's hard to work with. So I want my handle to be about that long, plus I'm going to add some extra plus some more extra because I would like to do the same thing here where I did a little spiral and then I attached it again with the tag through it. So I would like my spiral to be right about here so I'm going to hold this pencil in the direction that I want the spiral to go in. Leaving enough to attach it to the side again. And put my tag through. And then attach it the same way onto the side, being careful not to bend the paper. So you can smooth out your handle to make it the way you'd like it. And there you go. I also added a couple cute little buttons from my stash that coordinate and some other little enamel shapes. Next for the geometric apple box, I have all of my pieces here. Here's the stem and the leaf. Here's part of the hinge. These pieces go on, they're flipped over. They come off your mat like this and I folded them 
those are going to be some pieces that go on the inside at the end to cover things up to make it look nicer on the inside as well as this piece. Then we have four shapes like this that are kind of triangular. I went ahead and pre-folded some of those. These are all identical except for one which has two circles cut out of it. I left one to fold with you. The other three are folded already. And then the remaining four shapes look like this. There's one like this, which is almost identical to this one, except this one has a square at the bottom. That's the bottom of the apple. Then this piece has four holes cut out of it. And all of these folds are mountain folds, meaning they're just a plain, plain old fold. Just fold them all over. If it was to be a valley fold, it would go this way. There's only going to be a couple valley folds up on these top pieces, but we'll get to that step by step. Then I left one of these flat so that we could do that together. This one is identical to this one. So let's start with the bottom of the apple, which is, it's hinged, so the bottom is separate from the top except for this hinge. So first we're going to make the bottom. That is made up of these four pieces here. So for every score line, you just want to go ahead and fold it over. Nothing fancy, just plain old folds for these four bottom pieces, all mountain folds, which is just like this. So these two pieces are the same. This piece is almost the same, except for these holes. We want this to be the back. So this is going to be the back side. We'll make this the front, so there's a nice clean line on the front there, which means that these two are the sides. So I'll just go ahead and lay them like this, and I'll start to glue them together. First, I'm going to glue the tops of each piece just like this this one doesn't have those but the others do Oh, and I just realized this one should be a valley fold here. And now we can glue them together side to side just like this. So you can see where they meet up. This will go here, this will go here, that will go there, and that will go there. You can do them one at a time if that's easier for you, or you can put glue on all 
of the side tabs and glue your project together like that. So again, there's the top. You can see where it goes together there. I'm going to anchor the bottom in place. So again, if you need more time, you can put the glue on one tab and anchor it at a time. Or if you want, you can do it the way I'm doing it. But I'm going to jump up to the top to make sure that this is going to line up perfectly up here. And it kind of anchors the top and the bottom and helps the other two tabs fall right into place. So there we have it coming together. Pretty easy peasy. So this is the same, one, two, three, four. So that bottom is really coming together. I'm going to do the one, two, three, four here again. And then we'll do a final one, two, three, four here. So there is our bottom, except for that square. I'm just going to gently bend it out of the way. Put some glue on these bottom tabs. And line it up nicely. And press down from the inside.
next for these four triangular pieces you just want to fold them over everywhere that there's a score line Just like that, except for this very top tab, we'll bend it the other way. So I've already done that for these other pieces. All four are identical except for these two holes in the one. So I'll start by putting some glue on this triangle piece here. and folding that over. And now we can glue these four pieces together side to side using these side tabs. And this top, you might want to bend it over a little extra, make it easier on yourself. And now same, same process, we're just closing up the seam.
Next, I'm going to take my stem, and I've already folded it over on all of its score lines. However, these bottom ones, we want to be a valley fold, just like this. Then I'll put some glue on the side tab here. And you can even just lay it flat to squeeze that glue there. And put some glue on these little guys. If you need to, you could probably take a pencil to press down on the inside if that helps. And then it doesn't matter which direction it's going in, but let's now let's feed it through the square in the top here, just like this. And then I'll put a dot of glue on each side of it and open it up kind of like a brad. And glue each of those down. And next I'm going to take this piece here. It looks like this. I went ahead and folded it on all of its fold lines. And in the middle here I'm going to fold it the opposite way. So it looks like this. And it doesn't matter which way it's oriented inside here, but I'm going to glue it right on the inside. Just with glue on these outer half circle shapes. So this is just a finishing piece to make it look nicer from the inside. Just like this. You might want to check and make sure it's not wrinkling, the, the glue is not wrinkling your paper or anything crazy from the other side. Looking cute. So now let's get out four brads. I am so excited about my container of buttons and brads. I organize them by color so it's really easy to find what I need. And I noticed I was getting really low on some colors, so I just got some more at Michael's. So I'm going to go ahead and find four coordinating red ones to blend in with my red apple. Next I'm going to take this piece and the top is a little bit longer. So if you fold it in half you can see one side is longer. The longer side is the top here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the bottom. And I would like for my bread to be within the fold lines. If you could see through it, the bread, you want the bread to stay within this triangle here. If it's sticking out over this fold line, then we're going to see it in the finished project. And you also don't want it sticking up over the hinge, the fold. So if you can kind of open it up and orient it so that it's within this triangle, that would be perfect. Mine just happened to work out like that without too much trouble. So there we go. 
Next, I'm going to feed this between those two pieces. And put my bread through. I'm just going to get it through and then I can move the little arms out of the way because we also want this bread to be opened up within that triangle just to give it a nice finished look so you're not looking at your bread when you open the box. So I'm bending it back, but I don't want to bend it too harshly and kind of wear out the crease if possible so that it lasts a little bit longer. I have a feeling that whoever you give this to is going to want to hang on to it. So I'm just moving these little brad arms so that they're within the, the triangle. Just like that. So it's like this, that's good enough. It's within those two triangles so that when we add our finishing pieces, it covers up everything nicely. So these are the two finishing pieces. They look like this. They came off the mat this way and then I folded them and they're like this. I'm gonna glue just on these two outer pieces. Nicely finished off. Same with this piece. And again, maybe make sure it's your glue is not wrinkling your paper up if you have a lot of glue and you don't smush it down. Sometimes it can wrinkle up the cardstock. So there is, there's our apple. We can put our leaf on. And if you want, you can take a green ink pad. I have lots of these cat's eye shaped ink pads from Colorbox. Some of them are a little old and drying out but I have quite the selection because I love rubbing these around the edges of shapes. I get them on Amazon usually. They're getting harder to find in craft stores. This one's kind of hard to see. Maybe a darker green such as this is called a Q. Q-U-E U-E I believe. And there you can see that better. So that adds a nice little touch to the the leaf there. Not necessary, but cute. And then you could gently fold it in half, or if you want to be a little more meticulous, you could carefully take a bone folder, if you have one, and draw a little curved line with it, and then use that to kind of make a curved fold. That's a nice look. And then you can just glue it onto your project. On my original apple, I glued it like this. You could glue it the other way or this way. So just a little bit of glue on the edge there. And then just right onto your stem. Finally, for the pencil box, I have the pieces laid out here. I went ahead and glued some panels on, but first I'll start up here. I've got the eraser part, the metal part, the bag itself, the front, this is the front and the bottom. Then I've got the wood, the graphite. This is the side 
it looks like this. And I went ahead and glued these panels onto it. There's a hole up here at the top. Then these panels here that obviously go on the front there. Then I have the back and I glued the back panel onto it. And I've got the other side and I glued this panel on here with this cute apple paper. So I might as well glue these two together since they're right here. Easy, easy peasy. So here's the front and the bottom of my pencil. If you have it upside down, it's not gonna work the right way. This, this section is wider than this section is. So if you fold it over, you can see that it extends past this fold line. That means that's the bottom. Because if I was to do that here, it meets up with the fold line. So we got the three parts and then the bottom, which is a little bit bigger. First, I'm gonna take this piece here, and I did go ahead and rub an ink pad around the edge a little bit. It's some brown brown ink. Don't have to do that if you don't feel like it. I just thought it might be cute. I did not do that on my first one. I think it's cute either way. So as you can see, I'm putting some glue on these three tabs, and then gluing this onto this piece here, one tab at a time. Next I'm going to glue this piece on. Then I'm going to go ahead and glue this graphite piece onto the tip there. You could put glue on the whole thing, but I'm just going to do it on the, the two outer tabs. Next, I'm going to go ahead and glue my eraser on, and you want it to be, you want to put it on like curved. You kind of want to hold it like this when you put them together. If you were to do it flat and then you bend it, it might get a little, a little funky. So I'll go ahead and put glue on this. Line up those fold lines and you want it to be flush with the, the edges there. So you can see how it's, it's flush. Then this also, same concept. Right up there, flush with the eraser. And you want to be careful not to get glue on your shiny paper, otherwise kind of hard to get it off. Then, these are almost identical. The middle one is a little bit wider. And you want to just center these right in the center. 
of each section. Super cute. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so next we are going to glue this together one tab at a time. Then we can put glue on these two. Finally, we can put some glue on these three bottom tabs and fold the bottom over. Super cute. So we can put the handle on. As you can see, I used some wire, some craft wire. The gauge is not really that crucial or important. I have some red in my stash. I used black before, but either way. So I'm going to start by putting it through here. And you want to be careful not to bend your paper. Then I want it to be about this long, and I'll want about this much extra to tie it on. And then I'm going to do this spiral thing again, so I'll leave about that much for that. So I want my spiral to be right about here. I'm going to hold my pencil in the direction that I want my wire to be going in. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll bunch it up a little more. And feed it through and wrap it around just like before, but being careful again not to rip your paper or bend it or anything. Just like this. And then you can kind of adjust it, and smooth it out if you need to. Love it. So that's it. That's how to make all three projects in the new School Supplies SVG kit. I hope you have an awesome time making each one. If you do, I would love to see a picture on Facebook, Instagram, your blog, Pinterest. 
Like I always say, however you like to share, I always love to see, and so do the rest of our crafty friends. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time, and happy crafting.